Put it all out in the open, no we don't have to control it Put it all out in the open If it's only for a moment, it's a lifetime of emotion Put it all out in the open Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a barn vlog in forever, so I'm gonna do one today with some of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, I've been less active and I apologize for that. It's been harder to get videos together because I've just been so busy. I have like five new training horses coming in in like the next two weeks, so it's gonna be hectic. Um, anyways, so I'm going to be trying to do more videos and include more of my clients in videos as well, so long as they're okay with it. And yeah, and I'm also going to be working on the part two to the behavior series. Those videos are just more time consuming, so I need to pick a day where I can just sit down and kind of blast through it to get it up. And the part two is going to include like re relaxation signals and like behaviors when horses let down from stress, as well as like context surrounding behavior to help people kind of differentiate between when their horse is stressed or excited and so on and so forth. So watch out for that video and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it. And also check out part one of it because I think part one will be necessary to understand part two and so anyways this is my very messy feed room maybe we'll do a video of me cleaning it up next time because yeah i have to pre-make a ton of grain they're not pre-made yet um for their meals and then yeah my supplements are in here and yeah it's kind of just a shit show like my life is so so first things first before i go and do anything with the horses i need my treat pouch which is right there and for those of you who are interested in what this treat pouch actually is it's just a tool belt that i got from home depot so it's way cheaper than a lot of the specialized belts and it has way more pockets and you can put way more treats in it which is good if you're training lots of horses or doing lengthier training sessions so i need that i put it in here because the rat literally ate my trainer's pouch a rat did this um i'm pretty pissed at him i don't know where he went we were gonna have a talk but he pieced it so um yeah this is what he did it's basically unusable now so shout out to ratty mcratface for ruining everything for me and then this is a whiteboard that my adhd ass made thinking i could be more organized and i literally have not used it that was written in the first day I hung this up which was like honestly probably eight months ago so yeah go me okay so quickly before we go out i just wanted to talk about the food that i use for training and why i have so many different types of treats so this right here is just a high fat grain and this is one that i just use for feeding percy because he's a harder keeper he just gets a little bit of it but for my other clients that are off the track thoroughbreds if they don't like the alfalfa pellets i'll use these instead and then these are just generic alfalfa pellets you could also use timothy hay pellets or honestly any type of hay pellet and the reason why hay pellets are good is because of the fact that they're low sugar lower calorie and yeah forage based so you're not going to be feeding your horses tons of grain in feeding if you feed them with these um and you just need to make sure that the pellet you buy is not one that needs to be soaked before being fed and then for higher value treats, this is just another type of grain. Since I live in Canada, our grains are actually quite a bit different than what's in the States. So this is called Step 5. It's from High Pro Feeds. It's a lower calorie feed that is in bigger pieces so horses can't eat it fast and gorge themselves. So it works really well for training because you can feed them in larger quantities than you can a lot of treats. Um, and they taste better. They smell really good. So these are higher value than the alfalfa pellet while still being a lower calorie food. That's not going to cause the horses a lot of fatness, you know? And then this is empty, but these are just kind of a smaller mint flavored horse treat that I feed. Again, this is a higher value treat because it's a more exciting treat than the pellets are. Um, but as you can see, I'm basically all out of them. And then for super high value treats, I have these super fancy ones that a lovely fan gave to me as a gift, which is so, so nice. I love them, so thank you if you're watching this. And then this here is a target stick. I literally just cut a hole in a tennis ball that's for dogs to play with and then stuck it on the end of a telescoping pointer. So this can extend to like six and a half feet, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, and then this chart here is kind of just a reminder for me and anyone else feeding the horses how to check for like horsey health. It was given to me by Guelph University for one of my classes on equine sciences. And I think this is like a really, really great resource. So last but not least, these are the highest value treats I have. These are the Equinox horse cookies. 
They're made in Alberta, so they're a nice Canadian made treat and they're really good. I've literally never had a horse say no to them and for horses that aren't super food motivated or haven't been fed a lot of treats and don't know how to accept them yet, these are what I use to kind of start getting them interested. So these ones, since they're a high value treat, I don't feed them in large quantities. They're like a jackpot reward and you can break them in half if you don't want to feed a full cookie. So I have my low value, higher value with slightly less high value underneath, low value again, and then medium value. And the reason why it's nice to use different types of food is just that if a horse starts to lose interest in what you're doing, if you have different types of food, it can pique their interest again and just make it more rewarding for them to continue trying attempts throughout training. So it's just good for variety because if you're feeding the same thing the whole time, some horses get bored and it also doesn't allow you to give like a better reward for like a really good attempt or if they accomplish something they've struggled with in the past and so on and so forth. So Milo heard me digging through the grain bins. So here he is. He's like, let's go, let's go girls. Yeah, he does that mouth thing when there's food involved. It's like still an anxiety thing that he's had left over from being a rescue. So that's a little slight stress behavior because he doesn't like waiting for food. And this is Perrin that was a puppy probably the last time he was on my YouTube just because I haven't had him in videos. He doesn't come down to the barn yet. He had an accident with horses, so he's quite stressed around them. So we're doing it really slow, reintroducing him to horses because he gets barky and reactive and it's just not fun for him. So very slowly reintroducing horses to make it a positive experience. And he kind of just hangs out in the yard and he gets to see them. And he has certain horses that he likes, but like Milo and Banksy kind of square up with him. So they definitely don't help. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of people have noticed that Milo's not been on my channel very much over the last several months and that's just because over the winter he had pretty severe ulcers they were grade three ulcers which means that like they're out of four so that's pretty severe so i wasn't really riding him during treatment and um so i gave him like probably two months off from that and then i've been slowly bringing him back he has a locking stifle so it means when he's not in work it gets worse and he can get kind of more sticky and sore so we've been slowly rehabbing him from that because he's just not been super happy in work and i want him to be happy um, so I'm just trying to keep it nice and easy for him because I don't want him to get ring sour and he was a little bit ring sour to start with. So, so yeah, since he is a bit ring sour, I've been trying to make it more positive and rewarding for him because I really don't want him being cranky in work. And like for him especially, it was super unusual for him to be kind of as backed off as he was in work. And initially before I got him scoped for ulcers and everything, like... Usually unless it's like an acute lameness, which he wasn't lame, he just didn't want to go forward, which I guess in itself is a little bit of lameness because he should not be like that. But anyways, it's unusual for him to not want to go forward, so I gave it like a couple of attempts to see if it was like just the day and I did some groundwork in between and kind of lunged him and then when it persisted, that's when I got him gastroscoped and kind of did all of the stuff that I- Phoebe, look who pushed the door open. Excuse me? Hello? What are you doing here? She's like, I'm shift supervisor. You can never get left alone. So anyways, when it persisted, I got him scoped and that's when we discovered the ulcers. I was like 99% sure he had ulcers at this point before I even took him there. I told my vet, I would literally be more surprised if you didn't find ulcers than if you did. So, and then of course, since he does have a locking stifle, it's worse in the winter because it's cold and it gets stickier. So basically what a locking stifle is, is the scientific name for it is like upward fixation of the platella ligament. So basically it's like the ligament in their stifle, which is comparable to the human knee kind of getting stuck in a groove. And when it locks, Walks, you'll notice the leg kind of stick forward and they won't bend the stifle properly to follow through with the walk so it can sometimes result in them dragging the leg and then to get them unstuck they either do it themselves eventually because it'll come out of the groove or you can back them up he hasn't had it fully lock like that for like years now but in the winter time especially if he's not been exercised a lot it does get stickier and it's uncomfortable for him because it probably rubs a little bit more and there's treatment options like cutting the ligament or blistering it to try to get it to stop but both of those are more painful and if you cut the ligament it means he can't lock that part of his leg to stand and sleep so he'd always have to rest that leg so I don't want to do that unless it's like an absolute necessity and since it's not been locking we're not I can't remember if I mentioned this in the last video but I recently got my logo like very very slightly changed to include little Banksy's face so you can see him on the far left and then it goes Banksy, Milo, and George Prior to getting it the slight edit, it was just like a regular horse because I didn't have like a third super special horse that I wanted to feature in the logo portion. And then he was born, so bam. Can't go anywhere without the shift supervisor. She's like a shadow. 
Sometimes I lose her when she's right behind me because she walks so close to me that I like to look side to side and I don't see her. And then we got the squad over here. The squad. So with grooming Milo, I'm really gentle with how I shed him because he has sensitive skin and doesn't love the shedding blade. And this is also why I give him a cookie here or there and why he kind of chews and licks too because I feed him frequently throughout the grooming process. Just because after his ulcers too, he was a little bit more touchy-feely obviously when he had the ulcers. So he's kind of expecting it sometimes to be uncomfortable in certain areas. So I try to stick to the areas he likes, which is like his shoulder here. He really likes this rubber curry brush because it's nice and soft. So I do like a lot of his nice, scratchy spots and then I go to the other parts and I've been counter conditioning any expectation that it'll be uncomfortable due to the previous history of ulcers because once you start he realizes he likes it and he's great. Good boy. So cute. No. Start off with a little bit of the target training in Liberty work and then I do the practice with the mounting block at Liberty after we've practiced some of his recall and the reason why I've been working on the mounting block like this is because he's just been a bit block sour since having ulcers and dealing with like the discomfort issues under saddle and this is because there was a few times where he would have been uncomfortable from his stomach where he was getting ridden while we were working to kind of figure it out and while I didn't work him hard during this time because I could tell there was something not quite right I did get on him a few times to kind of see if it was something that would change by day by day since it wasn't super serious the symptoms before getting him scoped so he does have a bit of a negative association with it so I've been trying to make it more fun getting him to practice standing near the mounting block and rewarding him for standing while I go up to the top of the block and just kind of working on him being sour with that because I don't want him to have the negative association with the block and I want our time together spent riding to be fun for him and to not have him expect that his stomach is going to hurt during it so it's something I've been working really hard on because I'm just yeah I'm not super happy with how sour he got following his lameness and stomach issues and I really want to get back our partnership and make it really nice for him again so it's disappointing but it's something that I'm willing to take the time to do because it's not really fun for me or him if he's really resentful about standing at the block and going forward and he does still suck back a bit under saddle so when I get on him I've been working on reteaching a start button which I've been using just a vocal clucking cue to teach and then initially I would start with like just one or two steps of trot and then click and bring him back and reward and then as he got more willing to the point where he would go forward right away when I asked him to go to trot then I would start asking for a few more steps here or there so it's a really really light ride because he's still building the strength back in his stifle and he still is a little bit sticky in the stifle but it's something that I'm working on just helping him go forward and making it an enjoyable process that he gets rewarded from rather than just putting the leg on and having him go forward and assume that the leg is going to hurt because he had ulcers before. Even still, he carries more tension under saddle than I would like him to, so this is something that I'm working pretty consistently on, and I do a lot of groundwork days with him instead of just doing every day as a riding day because I do want him to start to build the strength without having to carry a rider because it's obviously way harder for a horse to kind of lift their back with a rider on and do all the up and down transitions with a rider on, and it's more impact on his stifle when I'm on him. So I do a fair amount of lunging and groundwork days and also working at Liberty and stuff and working on that. And then here he offered me a couple of strides of canter, which is good because especially with the right leg on the outside, it's harder for him because it's harder work for his stifle to push off on the outside of a circle. So that was good. I only asked him for a stride and then rewarded it. And yeah, we're still working through the stiffness and everything. So hopefully soon he'll feel better. I have my treats all ready for Banksy now. So he's going next. But before I do that, I'm just preparing dinner. Usually I pre-make dinner. I've already got all the supplements in and other than the oil in some of them. So I only feed dinner once a day because it's just easier for my schedule. So this is the O3 Animal Health Omega Complete oil that I really like. So they all get it and it's yummy, it's palatable, it helps hide their supplements more. So it's a good thing to add for horses who are picky about powdered supplements. 
Um, and then I just give like a very small amount of rice bran to my fat ones again because it's palatable, it hides the powders, and then they get biotin, copper, zinc, and then um, one of these guys, three of them are on this just to kind of balance their folic acid levels. This is the one I chose because they only need to have a very small amount of it for them to be balanced. I don't have the base. Milo gets the Visceral Plus Ulcer one. And none of them eat, like, a lot of grain. Like, the most that they get is Percy because he's the hardest keeper. And he probably only gets about 400 grams of grain a day. But that's also including the alfalfa pellets, which is technically a forage. So it's not technically a grain. And I soak alfalfa cubes because it gives them more water in their diet. And again, it just makes the powders really easily, easily mixed into the food. And it's just a good way to, like, prevent choking by adding water into it and also just colic as well because it makes them have to intake more water if they've had a day where they haven't been drinking as much so I just do that as a just in case and also it just gives them some extra forage in their diet so for skinny horses it's good. Some of the supplements that I feed them are for their feet so the zinc, copper and biotin are all good for hoof health and then the biotin also helps with hair health and so do the zinc and copper they prevent bleaching in the summer and keep the coat healthy but my main priority is the hooves especially since all the horses here are barefoot right now so it's important that they keep growing healthy hoof and then for any of the thoroughbreds I get off the track to rehab to barefoot it's important because they want all the new hoof growth to be healthy. Boys! Milo's eating in there. He's eating out of bale number one. This guy and that's bale number two. Banksy says hello and yes it's muddy because I live in a rainforest and it's the first day of spring so finally we will be getting some nicer weather with less rain hopefully. And hay-wise, they get three different types of hay. So the alfalfa, as I mentioned, just as a snack, they don't get that free choice. And then they have a local third cut grass mix that's pretty nice. And then they also get a first cut Timothy bale. So they get to kind of practice foraging behaviors going in between those, um, which is nice for them. So they get to have different types of grasses. And then for enrichment, I have these little logs here that were cut down from one of our trees that fell down recently. And they like chewing on the bark, so it kind of just gives them something to play with and chew on without chewing the fences or anything. And then also for enrichment, I have this little feeder ball that I'll fill with treats occasionally. I don't really fill it much when it's really wet because then they just get disgusting in there, but they love it. This hawk that has been around a lot lately, just watching, he's up in the tree there. Goes right there. Sir Banksy, who really wants to train because he just stares at me like this all the time. All the time. So in all honesty, part of Banksy's training days out are actually just like standing here for grooming and stuff because he does get distracted pretty easily when people bring other horses by or if he hears something. So we've been working a lot on just having him be patient for grooming and whatnot and just standing and not hyper fixating on other horses walking by. And then here I'm just using some of the essential oils that I got from an equestrian company that has them for horses. The one I'm using on him is a peppermint oil and it's called Peppermane. If you look at the links down in my description, you can go check out that website if you're interested in getting any essential oils for your horse he likes them and they're relaxing and I found that he relaxes when I put them on which is really nice and then also I've been working on his feet picking them up and I reward picking up the feet because he is sometimes a bit more nervous with my farrier so I've just been working really hard on getting him to be super good and quiet with me doing his feet and when he holds it I'll click and then I reward him after and then I just do this with all four feet just to kind of condition the behavior and it's really no different than doing feet any other way other than the fact that he gets rewarded rewarded for being good with it and if he pulls back at all I just pick it up again and keep going and then reward.
And then when I'm walking him from the field or to the arena, I halt him a lot just because he did get quick initially when we were walking, especially when he thought he got to meet another horse. He would kind of start walking and pulling and I don't want him to pull. So I've taught him a woe cue where I ask him to stop and I want him to stop at my shoulder. Sometimes he kind of pivots his bum a little bit, which isn't ideally what I want, but it's still close enough. So I still reward that. And then as he gets better, I'll start asking more of him. But I just do this a lot to kind of make him focus on listening to me and what I'm doing with my body so that he doesn't think that as soon as we start walking we're going to automatically be marching exactly to wherever he thinks and he also for whatever reason really likes the jump arena so here he thinks he's going in there and I do not know why he wants to be in there in all honesty because the only time he ever really goes in there is when he's practicing ponying and yeah I'm not sure why he's so obsessed with it so yeah I just halt him a lot and then past the girls here I bring out my target stick because he does like to stop and look at the mares quite a lot so I use the target to regain his focus when he starts to look look at them and keep walking fast past him and the reason why I don't practice the halt in front of the mare's paddocks as much is because I do not want him to stop and look at them and kind of start hyper fixating on them especially since he is still intact so I just focus on getting him to ignore them and keep facing forward walking forward and focus on me rather than them. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, they just, he just looked over at Oreo and didn't do anything. That was huge. Ooh, wow. So is that? Somebody's excited. And then Banksy's work days are honestly just a lot about getting him to have fun and making it a rewarding process. So as you can see, he gets kind of excited in some of these clips. So I really do reward the relaxed behavior and then I reward quickly for his side pass stuff because it requires more focus from him. So he gets frustrated more quickly. So the reward schedule for stuff like this has to be more frequent than with anything else. And all of these things that I'm teaching him, like even just following the target, let alone the side passing, they're all gonna be extremely useful for when I eventually start him under saddle because he already has a leg yield cue then so it'll be really easy to match it to an under saddle cue and then with the target and him following the target he essentially has all of the stuff that he'll need to eventually learn how to lunge and make it a super simple non-stressful process so the big thing for him is just working on calm and not getting too excited because I don't want him blasting around on the lunge line when he eventually does lunge oh woo woo <laughs> You're a saucy boy, says Lord Capulet. <laughs> oh, that's cuteness, is what it is, and sauciness. Oh, here she comes. He's going to run because she's running up now. He's starting to Yeah. Perrin, no. Oh, God. No, Perrin. Oh, that's a good boy. That was a good listen. Banksy gets the most excited for anything involving recall, as I'm sure you saw in those last couple of clips. And sometimes he does like to leave to go interact with people walking up the driveway or dogs and chase them down the fence line. And since he's a baby, that's not really something I care much about because in all honesty, he stays with me and is focused on me in training a lot more than a lot of people's older horses are in training. So if he has his moment where he needs to take a second to go play, I don't really care. I'd rather have him leave and go for a buck than do it right next to me. So it's fine. He's just a kid. He he needs some time to himself sometimes. His reward schedule also varies by the day because it depends on how excited he is. If he's extremely excited, I try to reward quickly while he's still being calm rather than push it and have him potentially get too much excited and react. So it depends. 
So here I'm just working on bridling him and getting him to drop his head for the bridle and then rewarding it. He's pretty good because he drops his head for the halter quite easily, so he understands the general concept, but the main thing that I'm working on teaching him is to eventually grab the bit, which he has not learned yet. I still need to kind of poke my finger in his mouth lightly to get him to open his mouth. He's really good about bridling. And he's also really quiet about being unbridled, especially for a horse who's not worn a bit much, which is really, really good. And the reason why I practice bridling with him now is just because if he is to go to shows in hand he does have to wear a bridle so it's the most fair to him to get him super used to it at home before ever expecting him to wear one at a show so it's something that he needs to practice and I like to make it fun and rewarding for him because it is weird to have a bit in the mouth and they're not used to the feeling of not being able to spit something out when it's in the mouth so while he'll pick up with stuff and play with it and he's really orally fixated on toys and stuff it's a weird feeling to him to have something in that area of his mouth that he can't really like manipulate as much and move around and have it fall out or bring it elsewhere in his mouth. gotten quite a bit more used to wearing a bridle so you'll notice he chews on the bit and he plays with it but a lot of young horses when you first bridle them they'll keep their mouth quite open and they'll be chewing and opening and closing their mouth wide quite often and he's past that point now because he's gotten a bit more used to it so that's really good and I like leaving the bridle on for long enough that he has a chance to kind of play with it. We're just getting some scratches because he's getting used to the feel of the bit in his mouth which he doesn't love because he doesn't understand why he can't spit it out but he like scratches a lot so that's helpful handsome. look at how handsome you are are you talking to the ladies or are you talking to me i like to think you're talking to me good boy such a good boy. Oh no, he's talking to the ladies. And then we finished the day with feeding everyone dinner. Banksy's annoying because he always thinks Pogo's food is better and he likes to leave. They're the only two that I don't separate because they basically get the same thing. So, yeah, so I fed him all the way here so he can't steal Pogo's food. And he often likes eating the hay better than his grain, so I have to babysit him. Into his own little pen to eat. B Pogo just eats over there and then Milo goes into the lane to eat his dinner. One of my weekend days with my horses. Um, the feeding is kind of the last thing I do with them for the night before I go in. So I like to just, yeah, feed them, make sure that everyone eats, no one has lost any legs or anything or done anything stupid, and then go to bed and yeah, they're out for the night, just hang out together and doing some stuff. I didn't even want to sit, so I I guess all he wanted was company to eat because that's why he always wanted to eat with Pogo but then like even if I fed them side by side he'd want to eat Pogo's food and not his which isn't that big of a deal because they eat basically the same thing Aaron's talking to his ball yeah so anyways that's the day in my life one of these days I'll try to do some with my clients horses but it's quite busy when it gets like that and um, I need a filmer so I'm gonna work on that and figure all that out and try to put out some more content and then the behavior video will be out ASAP I just have to pick a day that I can sit down and do all the editing and whatnot for them today was a little bit of an exciting day because is a little bit of a butthead today he is a little bit distracted by the ladies some of the mares are in heat and while he hasn't shown like any sign of being steady because he doesn't like drop or try to like really like flirt with them he was definitely more distracted so it's gonna be harder to work with him from the standpoint of if he finds it reinforcing to look at the girls I have to make sure that I'm more reinforcing so it requires more work on my part and we're just working on the focus walking him past the girls stay works really well with the target stick he didn't stop to look at them and he usually likes to stop to look at them he doesn't do anything bad when he stops but it's just annoying because it's like come on let's get to the barn so yeah, that's kind of what I'm working on with him, and obviously if the mares are in heat and he can smell them, that's more of a distractor than um, what regular life would be, and he's becoming a man now, so he's like, oh my gosh, ladies. But yeah, so we're going to continue to work on his focus, and I'm just still working on getting him used to wearing a bit so that he's not chewing on it too much or too upset about taking the bridle, so we're working on that because he'll need to wear one at shows. And then from there, like my goals for this year with him are mainly just getting him going with his groundwork, get him off property and out to shows, maybe pony him on some more trails this year if he's good. And yeah, just kind of get him out and exposed to nice short trailer rides to like places that he can go to just hang out. He doesn't like the cars driving behind him. 
pushing them side pass from the ground um, and then those aids will be eventually like used under saddle so all of that stuff I'm going to teach them from the ground I'm going to teach them on a neck rein from the ground which is essentially the same idea as what you would do under saddle except the pressure you would apply is from the ground and I'm just going to do it in a neck rope I already lead him a lot of places in a neck rope so it doesn't it's not that much of a difference like when I catch them I commonly put just put a lead rope around their neck and walk them around like that to move them short distances so they're already used to that so I'm just going to kind of expand on that because my eventual goal in a perfect world is to be able to do his first ride where I sit on him tackless and obviously the first ride I wouldn't be asking a ton of him but I think it would be cool to have him at the point where he's comfortable enough that I could just get on him without a bridle on and kind of just chill and have him be all right with it so that's my goal eventually but that's not going to be this year because he's two he's not getting sat on this year I haven't saddled him yet or anything and I'm not in a rush to saddle him or put a stir single on even though it wouldn't hurt him I just don't really see the need to kind of prepare him super far in advance especially since he's not turning two until the end of May I probably will put a saddle on sometime this year but it's just not a huge priority because you don't need like a year to prepare a horse to wear a saddle so I'm gonna just kind of do the stuff that's the most important which is honestly just his regular ground manners and getting comfortable going off property and away from his buddies all the time and also just retaining his focus around mares so that's kind of the goal for this year and anyways keep watching us because eventually hopefully I'll be starting him tackless when he's old enough and until then he's just gonna chill and be a baby they get to go back out on grass soon once it gets drier so they'll like that too it's exciting so anyways thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you liked it and if you share it I would really appreciate it because since I got hacked my like algorithm has been really bad and it's not I'm not getting suggested to anyone I'm like shadow banned which sucks but anyways um, yeah so you can check that out I also have like all of my other socials and then my um, saddle pads that I've been selling along with my merch and you can check out all those at the link down below right say, say bye Banksy it says bye and eating